I am so delighted to make my first video on here. I've put this together in an attempt to find inspiration again. I've recently been doubting my capabilities to create, which always puts me in a state of confusion and apathy. I often rely on inspiration to make me happy, so I decided to reflect. Where can I find inspiration? How can I trust that I am capable of creating? I'd love to share what I found out with you. I noticed inspiration meets you when you are present in your mind, when you are actively looking for intricacy, patterns, anything new, anything unusual. I roamed around the city on my own and had such a good time being observant. If you walk around absent-mindedly, you can only hope that your subconscious has picked something up to later inspire you. On this day, I became inspired simply by looking beyond. I hope to write songs for a living in the future, so I bought myself this beautiful digital piano. Um, I've been working with it for a couple months now and my intention when I first bought it was to open up a new door of musical inspiration and sort of elevate and broaden the scope of things that I compose. I never used to write on the piano, so I bought it as a challenge and let me tell you, it has changed the game for me. It has helped me explore my musical intuition, which is something that I never used to do, specifically writing like jazzy progressions um, without even knowing anything about jazz theory. That's been so fun and I've always been scared of improvisation just because I always expect myself to get things right the first try. But here with this piano, I've actually been able to experiment and make errors and actually be productive all in the comfort of my own room, which is very nice. I just wanted to give you a little piano tour. This is my digital piano. The cover comes out like this. I have these agate coasters. This is my songwriting book. It's new. I have written just a few songs on this. Can you tell my favorite colors are pink, sage green, and white? And then on the left side, I have my music boxes. I think my music boxes are one of my favorite things in my room. I bought these in Krakow last month. Um, these boxes are handmade in Poland. So now I'm gonna play each one to you guys. I'm not gonna tell you what song it is. So that was the first one. Here's the second one. And finally... <laughs> I want you to think of your favorite place or your favorite person. Visualize them in your mind. And now picture them without the details. Imagine that house without the defined tiles on the roof. The trees leaves with no veins or variegation. That home without picture frames. That person's face without flushed cheeks, without patterns of color in their eyes. Do you think those details are what you love about the place or person? Mm -hmm. 
I love visiting the bookstore. I like to wonder about the number of creative blocks each author must have experienced while writing the books in front of me. Rest assured, more creative blocks than the number of books being sold at this shop. Knowing that, it is satisfying to think every single author in here has overcome the struggle of finding inspiration and is now published. It gives me hope for when I feel hopelessly uninspired. Another exercise to trigger inspiration is to open up a picture or photo book. Choose an image and make up its story. Embody that story, feel it out, write about it, paint it, sing it, feel its emotions. Inspiration doesn't always have to be genuine to your feelings. You can initiate it artificially with stories and emotions that are not yours. As you process them, you will make them yours and you'll start feeling. It is thanks to this piano that I'm learning how to diffuse pressure off myself in a creative setting. While inspiration should always be encouraged, it should never be forced. That makes me feel horrible about myself. So during the day, I do the most to feed my mind. And if inspiration comes from it, then great. But if I sit down at the piano for over an hour and get nothing out of it, that's fine too. I got some piano practice in. And in the meantime, I explored what doesn't work, which is always something great to be aware of going into the next try. I thought I'd show you a little snippet of a song I'm writing about my grandmother who passed away when I was one. I'm very much looking forward to sharing the song with my mother once it's finished, um, since her mother did mean the world to her. So here it is. As society's adulthood standards break down my thought process into rational thinking, forcing boundaries on my creativity, it is so important for me to stay in touch with my child self. One example of how I do this is by reading my favorite childhood stories to spark up old sensations and remind myself of the emotions that overwhelmed me as a kid. Digesting childlike feelings as an adult is an inspiring experience that we should regularly allow ourselves to have. Revisiting your child self, you'll soon realize you are picking up bits you had never put together before. You get to work on something you had begun but hadn't finished. This exercise doesn't only aid in finding inspiration. With the purity of a child's mind, you can also clear your vision to find inner peace and comfort. Lack of inspiration often causes a subdued panic in my heart. Sometimes it feels like I've lost it forever. Then I put my shoes on, I grab my keys and I walk out the door. I walk past people who have lives of their own. I see everything around me working in harmony the way it should. The seasons, the shops, the social life, they are all alive. This earth and its people will always grant me things to take inspiration from. It is loyal to me in that. When you are struggling to find inspiration within yourself, remember the world is screaming inspiration at you. You just have to unmute it.